Okay, so today's first topic is admissible lattices. Now it says from Coston's theorem, we shall construct an admissible lattice in an arbitrary finite dimensional L module and describe its stabilizer in L. Reduction modulo of prime then yields uh, linear groups and linear Lie algebras over an arbitrary field of prime characteristic. And, gen and so we're kind of just generalizing the idea of the Chevalier groups and algebras that we saw before. And so our first uh, topic in this chapter is of course going to be existence. So by Cosin's theorem, If we have n plus being the combination of the positive root spaces in L, and minus then of course being the negative root spaces, and then h of course being alpha being like the quote unquote zero root space then each of the universal algebras of n minus h and n plus has a, an integer form with an integer basis Of all, and we saw this last time, in the last video we defined FA, HB, and EC belonging to each of these three areas respectively. And we call these subrings u sub z minus, then of course u sub z zero, and then u sub z plus. Sorry, <laughs> no, some um, things are happening as always. And so, with that. We have that u sub z, which is how we are writing u of l over z, is just their product. So like that. Another little bit of preliminary talk here. We have defined, we have currently defined the lattice. We define a lattice in M in a finite dimensional vector space V over our field F to be the integer span of our, of a basis of V over F. Now, since we're in a field of characteristic zero, a finitely generated integer submodule of V is automatically an integer module of finite rank. Thus a lattice in V may be characterized as a finitely generated subgroup of V
which spans V over F. Spanning V over F. with an integer rank at most at the dimension of f of v. This brings us to a lemma to start off our discussion, our analysis here. We're going to let D B in our an in integer to the L and S we're gonna take a finite subgroup of Z L and not containing D. Then there exists a polynomial in L in the, in the L and the terminants T1 to TL over F such that F of ZL is Z, so it sends points on the integer lattice to integers. It sends our chosen point D to 1 and our chosen set S to 0. No proof. Say D it consists of our components D1 to DL. If k is a positive integer, set f k of t1, t1 through t l to be equal to the product of of T i minus D i plus K choose K times D i minus T i plus K choose K. So that that gives us an F K on the integer lattice gives us an integer. And that fk of our chosen d is going to be 1. Because then in that case, every choose in our polynomial becomes uh, just 0 choose. It becomes k choose k, which is going to be 1. In the box, in ZL centered at D with edge QK FK is going to of course take the value zero except at D So we choose k large enough. How did I spell enough like that? Enough to uh, cover s, to capture s. And let f be fk. All right. So this brings us to our theorem. We're 
going to let v be a finite dimensional L module. Part A is that any subgroup of V invariant under U sub Z is to direct some of its intersections with the weight spaces of V. Part B, that V contains a lattice, which is invariant under U Z. Now the proof for part A, I'm going to let M be a subgroup of V. Stable under U sub Z. For each weight mu of V I'm going to set D of mu to be mu on each H so it's going to end up being like a vector of L dimensions with each component being a vector, being an integer. Fix a weight lambda of V. We get from our previous lemma. A polynomial f over f in L variables such that f sends elements every element in the integer lattice to an integer. F sends d of lambda to one and it sends d of each mu to be zero for lambda, for mu not being lambda, in pi v. I'm going to set u to be f on h1 through HL by a previous lemma U is in U zero Z U Z zero. We see that U acts on V projection onto the weight space phi lambda if phi is an M it's phi lambda component U on V lies in M. Okay, L part B. Looking at uh, Vile's theorem on complete reducibility, 
Let me assume. V is the lambda, so it's irreducible. I'm going to let V plus and V be a maximal vector. Uh, weight lambda and set M. To be the action of every element in uz minus on v plus. Since all elements except one in the z basis EC of uz plus. Kill our V plus we have that our use at minus use it use it plus on V plus is just the same thing as the integer scaling V plus. Also, you said zero on V plus is also just Z V plus. As H I B I, H I choose B I acts on V plus as, mu as scalar multiplication by Lambda H I Lambda H I minus one through Lambda H I minus B I plus one over B I factorial. Thus, uz of acting on v plus is equal to uz minus. We know we can decompose this. Uz minus, uz zero, uz plus acting on v plus, which is just uz minus. Both zero and plus end up just scaling v plus by an integer, which gives us m. So m is invariant under uz. And we also see from this At the intersection of M with the root space of lambda is going to be integer copies of V plus. As all but finite, finitely many FA kill V plus. M is finitely generated. Also, since u z minus contains an f basis of u n minus and u n minus on v plus is v m spans v over f and they're yelling upstairs again 
Now, we still need to show that the integer rank of m, oh, I guess I should write this out. We need, we need to show that the integer rank of m is not, does not exceed the f dimension of v. Suppose otherwise and let r be the smallest number of vectors and m, which are free, free over z, linearly dependent over f. Now we want to say that the sum of our ai's and vi's equals zero for ai in our field and for vi in m. So I should write that out for each i in f, fi, b non zero, and m. So for some u in u sub z, u on v1 must have non-zero a non-zero v lambda component otherwise v1 would generate a non-zero proper UL submodule of the irreducible module V. On the other hand, the V lambda component of each U acting on VI, U acting on each VI lies in M. But part A, so is an integral multiple of V plus say am I of v plus as m intersecting v lambda is z of v plus. So the sum of the ai vi equals zero implies the sum of the ai on u on vi is zero. So the sum of the ai times the mi is zero, with m1 being non-zero, of course. So zero is m1 times the sum of the ai vi minus the sum of the ai mi times v1, which is the sum starting at two, of course, of ai, then m1 vi minus vi m1. This is getting hard to write. Now the the vectors m1 vi minus m i v1, which is what this act 
Yeah, I, I'm losing my mind. That's what that says. M1 VI minus MI V1. And these vectors lie in M and are free over the integers, but linearly depend are linearly dependent over F. Contradict which contradicts the minimality of R. So M is a lattice in V. In V stable under U sub Z. All right. So you'll have to give me one second. All right, so a lattice M in a finite dimensional L module of V invariant under invariant under R U sub Z is called admissible. The part B part B gives us not only the existence of such lattice, but it shows us a how to construct one, the smallest possible one, given, containing a given maximal vector if is irreducible. You also see that by part A, M is the union over mu in lambda and mu v of mu intersecting v mu. When V is L itself, the integer span of a Chevalier basis Is an, is an admissible lattice, as we have seen. All right, I... Hmm, do we go on to stabilizer for admissible lattice? Yeah, let's do it. So next up we have the stabilizer of an admissible lattice. I'm going to let V be a finite dimensional L module. Now it's going to be faithful, just to make things easier for ourselves. Then we can see the integer span of pi v. We can call it uh, lambda of v. Lies between. Lambda and the root lattice 
lambda r. And by a previous theorem, we can choose admissible lattice m and v with a stabilizer LV in L with HV being the intersection of H and LV. And we will see that LV only depends on the choice of V and not M, so this is an ambiguous, although we won't we don't know that right now technically. We see that L of Z lies within LV, which is closed under the bracket. To say that H and H leaves M invariant is to say that lambda H lies in the Z for all lambda in pi v or extend by extension lambda v. And we know that from part a of our previous theorem. And thus, this shows that our last inclusions, lambda, which we discussed above, lambda containing lambda v containing lambda zero, lambda r, induce reverse inclusions h z each of the integers, including h v, including h zero, where h zero is a set of elements in h, where lambda h is an integer for all lambda in lambda r. And of course, HZ is the intersection of H and LZ. Which makes it the integer span of all of our H alphas across alpha being the root. And we see that HV is a lattice in H. We aim, to, we aim to show we aim to show that LV is an admissible lattice in L. Now, and so we have a lemma to start us off here, which we need a new page for, as you do. If u is in the universal algebra of L, and x is an L, then in the universe of L, universal algebra of L, we have n the adjoint of x to the n of n factorial of u is equal to the sum for index going from 0 to n 
uh, sine maybe one i, then times x n minus i over n minus i factorial times u times x to the i over i factorial. And the proof. For we go by induction. So we're also going to use induction on n with n equaling one, giving that the adjoint of x on u is equal to x u minus u x, which we know is true. Then for n greater than zero, we have that adjoint of x to the n over n factorial on u is the is the adjoint of x over n. So essentially we're splitting off our last term, so then we can expand the rest by our formula up above, which will give i from zero to negative one of negative one to the i, x to the n minus i minus one over n minus i minus one factorial times u times x to the i over i factorial, it probably should be n minus one minus i would make more sense if I wrote it in the wrong order. So I'll just fix it next time I write it on this next line here. So this gives us, well, we have our same sum from the zero to n minus one. First off, of negative one to the i of x n minus i to the n times n minus one minus i factorial times u times x to the i over i factorial minus our sum from 0 to n minus 1 of negative 1 to the i times x to the n minus 1 minus i over n minus 1 minus i factorial times u times x to the i plus one over i factorial n. Now, by the change your index sending i to i minus one the second term reads as minus of the sum from 1 to n of negative 1 to the i times x to the n minus i over n minus i factorial, oops, n i factorial times u times x to the i over i minus 1 factorial times n. And so then for i not at 1 or n, for i greater than zero and strictly greater than n, we can add the terms to get negative one to the i times x to the n minus i times u times x to the i times one over n times n minus 1 minus i factorial times i factorial, that's all over 1, 
plus 1 over n times n minus i factorial times i minus 1 factorial. And this it actually just works out to be 1 over n minus i factorial times i factorial n minus i factorial times i factorial. With the zeros and nth terms as x to the n over n factorial u and negative 1 to the n times u times x to the n over n factorial as we need. Alright, now we have another proposition which is LV is, it, is an admissible lattice in L as an L module moreover we have that LV is HV plus integer copies of X alpha over alpha over our root system so LV depends only on V, not on M. And for a proof, we know that L of Z is H of Z plus the union plus collection of our integer copies of x alpha which is all going to be in lv and we know clearly hv is in lv by the previous and so by the previous lemma lv is invariant under all of our adjoint of x alpha to the m over m factorial. So we can write lv as the sum of intersections with H and L alpha and the L alpha so LV can be written as the sum of HV and the and the collection of the intersections of LV and L alpha with Z of X alpha being inside of LV and both LV and L alpha. So we get the proposition if this is if this last equation is an equality. So consider the linear map, linear map V from L alpha to H by sending X to X negative alpha bracketed with X as a multiple of H alpha. This is injective as the dimension of L alpha is 1 and
the bracket of x negative alpha with L alpha is non-zero. Then the restriction of phi to the intersection of L V and L alpha has an image in H V. Since L V is closed, under the bracket, and H of V as the intersection of L, V, and H. Hence is in F of H alpha intersecting H, V. As the intersection of a line and a lattice, In H, the latter group is infinite cyclic, cyclic. Thus, LV intersecting with L alpha is cyclic. with a generator of form 1 over n x alpha for n being a positive integer as x alpha is in the intersection of LV and L alpha. And then the adjoint of x to the negative alpha twice over 2 factorial on x alpha over n is x to the negative alpha over n, which is inside of LV, which because LV is stable under UV, and negative of the adjoint of x alpha over n squared times x on x negative alpha over n is 2x alpha over n cubed in LV because LV is close under the bracket But from this, you know that 2 over n cubed has to be 1 over n times an integer. <coughs> Sorry, my voice. 2 over n cubed must be over 1 n times an integer. So n squared must divide 2. So n equals 1. Thus, LV intersecting with L alpha is integer copies of X alpha, as, as we want. We have an example here. Consider L to be SL2 of F. with our standard basis x, y, h. For the usual 2D representation of L, v being f squared, The basis of one comma zero and zero comma one obviously spans an admissible lattice. Uh, 
with LV being ZH plus ZX plus ZY, which is equal to LZ. On the other hand, Taking LZ as an admissible as admissible lattice, then I was going to write basis in L. We get that LV is integer copies of half of H plus integer copies of x, plus integer copies of y. Hmm. These extreme cases correspond to the two possible Two possible weight lattices Lambda and Lambda R for the root system A1. And I think we can call it there now for a video. Yeah, that's that's a better length for a video. Next time we're looking at the variation of the missile lattice. Passage to an arbitrary field. And that's the end of the book? Oh, that's scary. Okay. So, I'm pretty sure our next video is going to be the last video before um, Lee Groups, and I need to compare the book. So I'll just work through the rest of Humphreys here tomorrow, and then that'll be my I don't know, other video that I'm recording on today, like actually today. And um, then yeah, we'll move on to the group. So look forward to that.